All right. So we got last time, I believe, evening time. Recharachti and Datum sent a letter. And Aaron, you always know exactly where we're at. I think we stopped here, right? 8.3, is that correct? We stopped, yes. We stopped translating um, right after the bird on a stick, the three flags and bird on a stick, I believe. But we left off with a hieratic, the line above, after um, I wrote in my notes, Yama, after the... Um, uh, go farther, farther um, to the front, near the front. To the front. But, oh yeah, we, we had this little puppy here. I don't think yeah. we to the to the west. To the Yama. Oh, that we, well, that we had. Okay, all right. So then we're picking up from from Yusin. Exactly. Okay. Just uh, uh, the hieratic. All right. Well, let's take a quick look at that together. I mean, U is what you would think. S is what you would think as well. Um, N is ligature together, so you have like a little N stroke, and then it becomes the triple plural stroke. Then chem, you'd be forgiven for thinking this was an S. Um, it is an N, but I guess. Uh, Actually, no, it is an S, isn't no, it? No, we have that wrong. Ah, look at it that. An S. Because it looks like an S, so, and why would there be an, M, an N in there in the first place? Okay, all right, so let's let's fix that. So Chemse or Chemos or however that was pronounced. Um, uh, the little sitting child behind that. Chod, the way he always does it. I think we're used to that by now. Um, pa has a little glitch here. It should really be one continuous Pa with the birds behind it, uh, with the wings behind it. Um, Aleph, Du, W, it's just a box. Aurelio, could you zoom in a little bit? Of course. How about now? Yes, that's better. Thank you. Okie doke. I'm going to go over these quickly because most of these we're familiar with. Her, ear, the T. Wait, ter, yeah, that makes sense. T is a bit weird, yeah. This one here, huh? Um, yeah. I, know I think he's done that before. He's done that before. Um, especially on top, he likes to do that. A little bit more pronounced on top of other signs. Let's see. So something like that. Normally, the most characteristic stroke of, of the T is the horizontal. But when it's on top of something else, he likes to emphasize the very beginning of the, the loaf as well. So ter, teri, maybe because the R isn't pronounced anymore. Just my guess. What the, the reed leaf is doing in there. And then we have the ter sign, which just looks like an S with one an X. One of those you have to look up. Go again. I was just saying it's one of those you have to look up. Like it's not obvious how it relates to the hieroglyph. Really. Yeah, not right. Not completely. You're right. I mean, that little piece is missing completely, right? The R. Yeah. Well, he's drawn that before, I think. But... Yes. Oh, you, you think he had it before or it was just simplified like this? All I, thought, I thought he'd done a little like serif on the bottom before. It's possible. Maybe that was the T instead of the R. I think it may have been. Let's have a quick look at what it normally should look like. Um, how do I get out of this? X. Um, I'll use this just because I don't remember the glyph number for. There we go. So we are Middle Kingdom. I'm sorry, we are New Kingdom. So middle section here somewhere. Looks like, so Dynasty 18, you still have the little serif. Here you still have it. And then it gets it lost. Disappears. Yeah. So that seems to be fairly regular what he's doing here. Oh, okay. He's just a ligature for T and R. Okay. All right. Cool. What else? Three stroke sun with a dot in the middle and R. Okay. I guess that is a double that's a W. I mean what happened there is normally he likes to go up before he goes down. There's like an oops. Well, you know what I mean though. He does like a little upward movement before he has the big downstroke. 
And I think those got a bit squished together here. H, Aleph. Um, here you can see it actually, the upstroke before it comes down. And then this is not a U, this is a, um, now what you call it, a Y, right? Finally, the night thing. Wait, how do you do that? I think you start in the middle. Horizontal down this, and then come the, the edges, I think. But this may be very Chinese influenced. I always think middle first before you do the edges. Sort of like how you would do the heart. And then this, I think. But I can't really prove it. Um, the rest of the line. When in pa, I think all this is familiar, um, bird on a stick, then this highly stylized second form of Horus, instead of doing the usual thing, which would be something like, I guess, oops, I didn't intend to go back up here. They would never do that. Go down, and then the two legs, Instead of doing something like that, you really just do a highly simplified form like this, like this, and like this. You just have to know that that's Horus. Put on a stick again. Um, this here is very smooshy. It should really look like this. We've seen that before. So just sun plus plus the do valley. T. And by the way, I'm just going on. If you guys want to point something out, please do. Um, I just don't see anything super exciting here yet. I mean, the na here at the end, you really have to know. He, he yeah, found it's that. Very, very dated. I mean, obviously, that's being read core. I'm kidding. Japanese joke. So, um. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting because, like, it, it does look like a co because the strokes are connected, but the strokes mm -hmm. are also connected because that's how you make an N and that's how you make an A, right? Mm, right. And, exactly. Exactly. Like, they, they actually have those shapes individually. Oh, they do. Cool. Uh, next line. How do I clean this up? Any questions so far? Okay. If not, then let's take a look at the next before we get to a translation. Love. So, oh yeah, here to your point uh, from a moment ago. Here's that T again. So that's the that's the more full form of the T here on top, right? Of the so, atom, yeah. Then he does the really big sleigh. How exactly? Not sure. I would assume this comes first. Hmm. That almost makes you think you do that in the middle first. I'm not completely sure on the stroke order here. T is definitely first because it comes first phonetically. But then if you go like horizontal, horizontal, and fill in the rest, or I would think you start up here. You do the horizontal. You do this, you do the horizontal, and then just work your way down, which would be kind of logical. But it kind of looks to me like the middle is on, on top of the bottom stroke. So you mean this came first? So you're doing something like. Um, so you do the top stroke, then you do sort of down and over for the middle. Like this? No, do the middle, the, do the connecting line first. Well, so top stroke, connecting line. Just the connector in your yeah, and then the bottom is what it looks like to me. But I agree. No, that's the most likely in my mind as well because he clearly ends on that loop. Why do I like to go on about stroke order? Just because I think it really helps when you're writing if you don't have to figure out how do I do this every single time. I mean, imagine doing that for for writing English. It would be such a pain. Okay, put on a stick again. Neb here he uses the full form. Um, when he means, often he writes it like this, but here he actually does the whole thing. Something like that. Uh, Taui, no surprises here. Uh, on, we had before, I mean, you know, so that's sort of as expected. The city. I mean, if I didn't know, I wouldn't. Is that what he's doing? Yeah. 
looks like it, right? Or it almost looks like a like a T or something else. I mean, you know what needs to be here, so that's that's easy to identify. But it has to be a city; it can't be anything else. But it almost looks like a T and something else to me. Kind of weird. Um, send hub. Is that an Aleph? It doesn't look like one, does it? It looks like a B to me. It looks like a B to me too, yeah. Mm. It looks so like a B, just like this. But then... It should be one, but... It should be one. I mean, you don't reduplicate this thing, so it's not Hebub. <laughs> this is clearly a U. But it doesn't look like one. I mean, it should look like this. Or if it's underneath something else, it should look like that, but not like a B. This, this is a mystery for me. I don't know what's going on here. Maybe we can take a look at later where where that word appears again, if that's a one-off. What else? Dual straw, I mean, the, the Y thingy, walking legs, and here's the, here's the second form of the Aleph I just mentioned, the one that looks like a Z. Um, best jet, we've had that before. Always interesting to see the way that he does the gods. It's vertical, vertical, and then the last one has the flag. The other two don't. And here's our simplified horrors again. No, it isn't. What am I saying? Here's split on a stick. So what's that thingy here? That's a uh, oh, that's our that's that's to scale. Yes, our <laughs> job. I mean, our job. You're that's right. What we're picking up. So what he's doing here is is just um, it's just a bit bigger than the T. It's the R, and then highly stylized uh, JD, which by itself, interestingly enough, by itself it would write it something like. Right, like really fat D at the bottom. And here he does something different whenever you have the R on top. That almost looks like the horror sign. Okay. All right. Enough monologue. Who wants the, <laughs> the first sentence here? Volunteers to the fund? Well, I'm still figuring out how to zoom out. There we go. So we're here. Why don't we start small? Let's start from here to here. I can take it. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> we'll sit here forever. Uh, Erjed to 10 uh, D Hems T Her Iret Ich Mer. Um, so, I guess previous to this, it was uh, sent to the Ennead to say, mm -hmm. um, You are here sitting. Mm hmm. Um, doing what still? Right. Exactly. That's exactly it. In more more idiomatic English. Uh, what are you guys doing sitting there? Right. What, what are you guys still doing? Uh, what's up? Or, or more succinctly, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> right. What's up with that? Yep. Uh, I have a question. Yes, sir. For the for the M raw at the end, what's yeah. the what's the semantic indicator like? He still here. Um, is that is that the M of negation for the re the ready there or? Is it the what? I'm sorry. So at the end for the M the M red, mm -hmm. in her translation she said still here. 
Yep. I think um, Ra, actually it's a Ra in this case. Um, I think it means to or also, almost like to in English. It comes at the end of the sentence, not like in many languages, somewhere in the middle. But in this case, it really makes more sense as, as a still, like what you guys still doing here, or doing sitting here. So that Ra, is, that, is that the verb, verb ready there? Oh, I see what you're saying. I don't think so. I see what you're saying. No, it's, it's, a, like not, it's a like not doing. I, I was asking about the M of negation, kind of a Middle Egyptian. Sometimes when you see M before a verb, if, if that's a verb in this case, right? It can be the verb of negation. So like not doing, or I guess that's that the semantic meaning of still here. I, I see what you're saying. You're reading that like an M ready, basically. Um, I think it's just phonetic. Although I don't know what the what the word originally like Amrawat that's composed of. It's I believe it's a late Egyptian innovation. You don't my Middle Egyptian, what's the polite word? Um is not very good. I replaced another term I was gonna use. Um but I don't think that is common. I okay. And anybody who knows Middle Egyptian better, please chime in if that, that thing occurs in Middle Egyptian. But basically it's just its own word. I don't think no. it's like a negative plus plus verb. Although it looks like it, to your point. Okay. Still here. Got you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, adverbial sentence, right? You hear um, stative, and then followed by an infinitive. Upon doing, um, doing what? And then just a little, little. Is that an adverb? I guess it's an adverb. Adverb tagged in at the end. And that's it. Yeah, Ramses has an adverb. So can we go over the, the two ten again? I'm having trouble remembering which pronoun that is. Because if it's an adverbial sentence, shouldn't it be an independent pronoun? But it's not. So. Oh, okay. good question. I thought it was attached to the air jed, like he said to them, or yeah. Blair said to them. Well, it, let's play it this way. If you wanted to say, um, that's a great question. If you wanted to say, I am sitting here. How, oh, I am here. Forget about the sitting. How would you do that? Think Coptic. I'm buying myself. I don't know what here it is. <laughs> but when you say it, like, nope. yeah, in talk D or something like that. Uh, but just you, uh, I, like first person. I, an octi or something like that. Right. Wouldn't it just be no? T? I don't know, it's been too long. Maybe I think it would be T. Um, so this know. should be the plural form of the of that new suffix pronoun. Um, uh, not sorry, suffix pronoun, the new, um, whatchamacallit, subject the pronoun. The subject pronoun with, e with the, like the first present? Yeah, I think that's it. But you okay. know what? Let's pull up Ramses and um, Nevu and see if that's actually correct. I think that's what that is, though. It's not an independent pronoun because no, it's, it's not a nominal, nominal sentence. It should be an adverbial sentence. Let's see if that's right. Uh, Nevu. Apologize for all my scribblings here. Mm, then the next question is, where does he keep those pronouns? Probably be faster with the first present. Fifty six. So it is not a pronoun at all, really. I would say it is, right? Um, here we go. So in Coptic, if you wanted to say I'm here or something, it would just, oh, I, where where am I, for example? Uh, Titon, like, like where am I at, right? And then it would be ek. That's the interesting thing. Um, late Egyptian basically uses these new pronouns. To, took, to again. Sue said, um, I guess, tun, tutin, and said for, for adverbial sentences. Do they have anything to do with the 
with the um, what is not indefinite pronoun to in Middle Egyptian, or is that because that would in the Sejem to have form that would go just th th these look like they could have come from that. Do you know if there's any relation? Honestly, I don't. Um, I mean, these I mean, these guys for the direct object pronouns they say that it comes from the infinitive ending, right? Right, yeah. but I don't know if this is like an analogy to that or if it's a different formation. Honestly, I don't know what the phenomenal element. I mean, just if you ignore the third person for a moment, just look at the first and the second. Um, it's clearly formed from something like two plus suffix pronoun, right? Two e, two uk. This used to be probably two et, but then the t falls off, and then the plural you can also see it two plus just yeah, the suffix two, pronoun. Ten, yeah, and there is. Of course, there's all the two pronoun. Um, I think the one that you mean, and I'm I'm not sure if there's a direct link between those two. Honestly, I don't know. Could be an interesting question for like like paper research after this call. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. And they kept the third person. That one stays unchanged, right? Sue and said That's just a Sue. Yeah. Right. That's, that's just the, a dependent, or what in Middle Egyptian would be a dependent pronoun. Right. Now, the interesting thing is you can put this at the beginning of the sentence without anything in front of it. It doesn't need some kind of particle to um, to carry it. So, so these can function like independent pronouns again. Almost. Uh, this thing is not used for nominal sentences. So unlike your Anuk and uh, Intuk and Intuk, uh, Intus and Intif, etc., these are not used for nominal sentences. These are only used... Mm -hmm. um, basically with adverbial predicates, and then for the present one, like if you want to say, I um, I see, for example, it would be this new tui plus herde plus infinitive. So in this case, better for to see. Um, and that's exactly how in Coptic you would get something like T now. I mean, better doesn't live on it. It means, uh, or it does, but it means to dream or something like that, or pore. In any case, um, so this also serves as the subject for the for the um, simple present, because that's essentially an adverbial sentence. Mm. It, however, if you want to make like a nominal sentence, like I am a god or something, then you still have to use the old um, independent pronouns. So this is, so it's an adverbial yeah, thing. It's, it's very important between right because in coptic this like the first present is just a verb right that's how i think of it and so this is sort of halfway there like it's it's still an adverbial sentence but you use the special construction and honestly i mean when, when you look at for example ramses online and a lot of places they always put that herd back in um which yeah. after because he often doesn't write the hair you, but, but yeah, Ramsey's always transcribes it. Oh, there's a missing hair here to make it fit this grammar. In my mind, it's overcorrecting. I mean, it's nice when you're like reading the text as a student and go like, oh, nice. There's a her there. I know what this is. But uh, we're sort of like filling something in that they were just not, not using. I mean, if you say, um, mm, wait, uh, I'm trying to find a good analogon right now. Uh, if you delete like... Uh, you're going to the party this weekend. I mean, putting like an R in, like as a question, right? Colloquial question where you can leave the R out. You're going. Um, and what Ramses is basically doing, Ramses online, they're putting the are you going in front and it's super pedantic because that's not what the person was thinking who said that. It's just, you're going? Yep. Um, so I honestly don't do that anymore. I'm just thinking it's like halfway to Coptic, like you said. So in Coptic, this will be T. And then something interesting happens. In Coptic, this is uk. And this is, of course, this becomes f. And this becomes s. And then you have ten again for the plural. So some of them they lost their they lost their um their t. And I looked up why in demotic the circumstantial sentence with a, ek, and f and s become super common for the adverbial sentence as well. And I think the Coptic forms here come from the circumstantial. Um, and the first singular, the first plural, they preserve the um, the first presence, present from, from uh, late Egyptian. 
So it's kind of interesting. interesting. These guys here that we just substituted from Middle Egyptian to Late Egyptian, they get substituted again in Demotic and then become uh, become something else in Coptic. So in case you don't see the connection here, well, yeah, because there isn't any. <laughs> That's uh, the sad truth. But you can see it in the first singular and plural. I'm not so sure about the second. How do you, it's Tetin, right? Tetin or Teutin in, in Coptic. I always get mixed up with, does it have a, an Epsilon in it or not? So I guess that one lives on. Oh, and this one here, of course, becomes say. Um, like, yeah, right? So this one actually stays as well. So the plural is stays into Coptic. The first singular stays into Coptic. The stuff here gets replaced by by something that I think comes from EU, if I'm not mistaken. All right. Cool, thanks. Anything else about this sentence? Or have we milked it <laughs> entirely? Erratic, I don't think there's anything unexpected there. Agree. Should we do one more? I mean, hieratic wise, the T here is we haven't discussed yet. Hurt looks the same way as always. Emra. Yeah, I think we could just huge determinative stroke at the end, like he always likes to do it. I mean, in hieroglyphs, we'd be tempted to put it under the the door, I mean under the, the mouth, but uh, in in writing it actually becomes like a huge thing of its own. Yeah, should we just go to the next sentence? Ralph, you want to do one? Uh, I don't know what some of these words are, but I can struggle through it if you want. <laughs> so, so, Irpa Jadu Jadui or Ad yep. Adjadu and mm -hmm. Adjadui, something like that. Ajad, I think. Ajad. So I don't know what that is. Uh, boy, a oh, young man, adolescent, I suppose. And what does the what does the two do? Are there what? two of them? The two boys? Are they talking about Horace and Seth? Maybe. Yep, that's it. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay, and then Euton Jed Jedes Camu. Um, this one here, Sakem, is um, oh, complete, I think. Complete, um, yeah, complete, exhaust, something like that. Okay. It would still be complete or exhaust with that hair determinative? Yeah, the hair thing is weird. Um, yeah. It's it's coming from another word, and I actually have to look up which one it is. I have a I know in Middle Egyptian, Kim, right, does mean complete, but sometimes when I have the hair determinative, it, it could just it can mean black. Um, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, right. I think it, it is connected to black, isn't it? But Kemet it is also Egypt comes from black. Yes. Yeah, the the black black mm -hmm. yeah, and black I one. found it also like to complete, but also like to black, and I think maybe it's maybe even slightly different spelling, but like to blacken or like. I don't know what they exactly mean by that, but somehow well, it is connected. One thing you can do, which I've started doing for a Horace and Seth exercise. Um, sorry, Ralph, let me just jump in here real quick. Um, is just look those words in there up to see what what they actually what they actually how they actually used in other texts. So here's the one that we're looking at: Sakem to complete, which should be with a different determinative. Um, Jeez, noir seer. What's noir seer? To become black, I guess. Black and black and make, make black. Yeah, right. that makes sense. I mean, some... that, make, that makes sense, right? Chem is black and sir is the causative. Right. So, yep. But again, not a determinative, isn't there? So yeah, yeah. you're right. So here's mm -hmm. black with the with the, the hair basically, and then sir chem would just be to make black. And that's what it is. Unfortunately, no example sentences, which is interesting. But I think, and we're going to see that a lot in the next lines, he's just copying the spelling from one word to another. And that's why. It, so he's doing the there, there thing. Uh, <laughs> basically. <laughs> it's fun to describe from 3,000 years ago, right? 
<laughs> so U ten D Sakem and then Hold on, I'm sorry, I have a quick question. And the hieratic is is that the lock of hair at the end? I see I see the the Kim and the the owl. Is that the lock of hair? You mean up here, right? Um no no no, no, no back down towards Sekem. Here, right? Yeah, is that the lock of hair in hieratic? I guess it's this. Honestly, I'll have to look this one up because I don't know. But I can tell you this is an M. Mm -hmm. As you know, this is a W. So, and these are the, the triple dual strokes vertical form. So, uh, triple dual strokes, triple dual <laughs> strokes, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, this must be it, but I think we should look at that one once we get to the hieratic because I don't think it has come up in the text so far how to make this one. So, let's park this for a moment. I think it's this part here. I mean, it has to be, but let's see how that's normally written. Fair enough. All right. Um, let's go until, I would say until here, because that's where the sentence, end, well, the first part ends. Something like how will the two children uh, be given complete? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but complete what? Yeah, so we got a W with plural strokes. So that's like they're complete or something. Yeah, okay. Let's get back to that in a moment. Let's see how okay. it So we've got a, an Ahai thing. Right. Um, Ahai. That one you have to know could be time or lifetime. It can just mean time, like mm. after a time of three months could be could be an ahau of three months, basically. Or, but it can also be like, may the God increase your ahau, which would be increase your, your lifetime. Um, okay. And then Mta the cat, something like that? Um, what's that pronounced again? Kenbet? Kenbet is the court. Kenbet, mm -hmm. Ken okay. Ken so that's mm -hmm. the court. The lifetime of the court of the, the lifetime of the court mm. no it's an m he sometimes confuses them but in in okay okay um think of this like a causative like a lot of the causatives in in um in coptic that start with ta like I don't know, taco or whatnot, to cause some, what they really are, ta plus something. Um, what they really are in late Egyptian is t to give plus the verb. And then you can have a suffix at the end, which is exactly what's happening here. So d, sekemu, and then something, something. This is actually the. Mm -hmm. So is it that they're going to be made to spend their lives in court debating this thing? Is that sort of the same exactly. thing? Exactly. Okay. That's what it means. So it basically is um Irpa <coughs> Adjas now, I guess. Um, so, um yeah. as for the two boys, you <laughs> ten uh will will you? Well, let's get to what that is in a moment. Will you di sekemu give that they complete? That's a subjunctive here. Um, give plus subjunctive, give that they complete. Ahau em kenbet. Um, their life, no, it doesn't really say their life. Oh, does that mean their? Yeah. Probably, huh? Yeah. He does that every once in a while. <laughs> right. And is it a how or a hide? I may have actually messed, messed that up. I'm not completely sure. Let's look it up. Before I'm, is it a how? Well, here it says a how. For example, here that's the that's the case I was thinking of. M a how in Abed uh, Shomt um, in in a time of three months, or it could be this one here. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, the lifetime. The lifetime. So I think here it's the lifetime. 
Um, it's been their then, lifetimes. Their lifetime. Why is it not not um, not there with Pi Zen or something? Um, because it's they still do that during that time. Anything that is like closely connected to you, like your eyes, your hands, or something, you don't put the the possessive article, but you put the suffix pronoun. And I guess lifetime is in that that category. This is the inalienable distinction. Something like that. It's interesting. I was reading one of those those uh, love poems from the Chester. How do you pronounce the thing, Chester Betty? I'm always confused as to the E A and then Betty. I think it's Betty, not Betty, right? Chester Betty Papier. You Papier. can't really know, can you? I mean, it's it's such English spelling is such a mess. Um, the vowels are optional, just like in Egyptian. So <laughs> just it's just a <laughs> yeah. papyrus, uh, the love poems in there. And basically, pretty much like there's so many words which suddenly have the suffix pronoun. I'm wondering if that's also a poetic thing. Mm. Not sure. I'm wondering if, like, when you switch to a higher register, you do more of that. Um, you know, like, well, we talked before, it seems like there might be something going on with the way the different gods talk. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Also true. Good point. Possible. Some are more colloquial and some are more formal or old fashioned or. Right. All right, then let's wrap the sentence up real quick. So you had the meaning. Just a gonna... quick thing. Yes. Uh, the Russian Wikipedia has a most just a bit T, so maybe it is an E, it's, assuming oh they know how to pronounce this. Yes, I mean, this, I have to make the assumption, but it's one of the few ways to know or to have an idea so, at English pronunciation BD, Egyptological pronunciation Betty is, <laughs> 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 is that what it is? <laughs> like that. <laughs> just put it I mean, maybe the Russian Wikipedia is just plain wrong. That could always be the case. Mm. So. I, I guess I'll look it up now. So just to finish that up real quick, um, this puppy here, U10, um, I would claim that's a future three. So mm. Um, are you going to give then a subjunctive that they will complete their lifetime in court, basically? That's that's exactly. So, are you going to let them, like you said, are you going to let them complete their lifetime in court? I think that's what it means. Spend their whole lives in court. All right. And third future, because it's a question, I guess, or to emphasize the fact that they're asking about that verb. Ah. Now you make me think. Is it a third future? I mean, I wonder if it was just a circumstantial construction somehow, but I don't know. I don't know. Questions are weird. Let's pick that up next time. And I guess okay. next time would be next week at two then, Eastern time, or basically an hour next later. An hour later. Okay, Okay. Okay. Thanks so much. Always. Thanks. See everyone Thanks, next everyone. week. You have a great day.